So, hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, we're almost on time and really delighted. Uh, Dr. Serena, this is going to be the 13th episode. Mm. So, we've gone quite a long way. And uh, thanks for to you to bring in such informative educational topics. Uh, it's very, it's been very interactive. Our audiences have uh, learned a lot and uh, the feedback has been that uh, this content which you have been presenting, you know, they have, were not able to find it in books or anywhere else. Yeah. So what you present yeah. is a very concise form of, uh, you know, summarized uh, knowledge and uh, great topic. So uh, we are really delighted to have the special guest today. So welcome, Serena, and good evening, our guests. The floor is all yours. Great. Thank you. And thank you, Pramila, for, you know, again, hosting, you know, the Pendulum uh, Real Talk. I really appreciate that as well. It would not have happened without you. So please keep that in mind as well. Linda, welcome. Thanks for attending today. And Charu, who is our guest, um, she will be talking about um, some services and uh, the topic that we're talking about today. And, um, you know, this month is um, uh, Minority Mental Health Awareness Month. Hi, Lori. Welcome. And so, you know, we, um, I wanted to bring acknowledgement to that being a minority, um, you know, and a lot of people don't, um, I've had this um, experience where people don't actually see me as a minority and then they treat me as one. So it's, it's an interesting pendulum, so to speak. Um, but I do have a very short presentation that I'm going to share with you. And I wanted to talk a little bit about stigma because, um, you know, that's something that affects everybody to some degree, especially with mental health and um, uh, substance use disorders. And uh, let me see, why am I not sharing? Well, this is not sharing. Okay, here we go. Um, you know, and, and it's also something that affects us in a lot of different ways and a lot of different levels. Um, and so I wanna just briefly go through this and then I'm gonna turn it over to our guest speaker today who's gonna introduce herself and also a little bit about some of the things that she um, um, oversees too. So, um, you know, the stigma, you know, being that it is uh, BIPOC, which is the Black, Indigenous, and People of Color Mental Health uh, Awareness Month is um, the month of July. And we're going to talk a little bit about the experiences of what stigma is um, and what you could do, you know, about stigma, because um, we've all um, experienced this to some degree, or we've taken part in it um, to some degree or other. And I know too, even being a minority, um, even within the Indian community, there's stigma um, that we will look at. So just a very brief overview, you know, what stigma is, um, a set of negative and unfair beliefs that a society or group of people have about something, um, and that could be towards a person, um, you know, these are some examples that are listed here um, on the screen. Um, and this could be about a person. Um, you know, when we talk about mental health disorders and substance use disorders, uh, these are common things that I've heard. And, you know, the different types of stigma that exist are that people actually, you know, they, they internalize them. Um, you know, and I've talked about this before, my own experiences. I've talked about it with students that I work with, with clients that I've worked with. Um, you know, that these are internalized, you know, that, oh, I feel lazy because of X, Y, and Z, or because I'm depressed. Well, it's not that, you know, you're lazy um, it, because of that. It's that this is what depression does, or this is how this works for you. And so we need to figure out what the plan is or how to work and, um, um, you know, monitor it so that we can figure out how to be more effective. And, and, and that's the experience that you have. There's also this anticipated type of stigma where people, you know, expect um, to to have uh, people um, have these kind of beliefs against them if they share these experiences with others, you know, that they're feeling depressed or that they're struggling with a substance use disorder or a mental health disorder. And so they may not share um, their struggles with other people. They may keep it to themselves, you know, and culturally speaking, um, a lot of cultures are like that as well. Indian culture is, is very much like that, where we don't talk about mental health or substance use uh, struggles. Um, you know, it's, it's considered to be stigmatizing to do so. Um, and so the idea is that, oh, if we share this, then people are going to be like, oh, my gosh, what's wrong? You know, they didn't raise their kids right or whatever. And it's like, well, it had nothing to do with that. It, it really is. I mean, this is what mental health and substance use disorders are, right? So the idea is recognizing that sometimes it is just 
what the disease does. Um, it has nothing to do with the person. It's how the disease operates in all people, um, regardless of you know race, color, um, ethnic background, uh, upbringing, whatever. I mean, obviously there are gonna be factors that play a part in how it manifests, um, but that is very independent of the disease itself, right? And then of course the experience, um, you know, sorry, the experiences uh, that there are types of stigma that people have experienced as well. And, and I have talked, you know, and um, re actually just recently just talked with someone about some experiences of stigma and uh, what that has been like, you know, just sharing experiences about having anxiety and and not drinking alcohol anymore, you know, things like that and what that has been like in different circles and whatnot. Um, so experiences that people um, have shared, you know, we talked about the internalized, the anticipated live or lived. Um, and I really like this definition that I found, you know, the process by which the reaction of others spoils normal identity. So how we identify, how we understand ourselves gets spoiled by other people's reaction. Um, and then we internalize those things or we anticipate that it's going to be, you know, our understanding of ourselves or how we see ourselves may get um, somehow distorted by how other people provide input, right? Judgment, so to speak, right? Um, and so what can you do? Um, you know, for yourself, you know, one of the things is just be aware of internalized stigma, you know, how how we talk to ourselves, labels that we use, you know, like the word lazy is a label, um, you know, kind of ways that we may self-sabotage, um, you know, a lot of people and, you know, I, I've worked with clients, I've talked about this in other podcasts too, about shaming and guilting ourselves, you know, about, oh, I feel guilty if I take a day off or, you know, when I need a mental health day, you know, and then there might be some guilt or shame, but yet at the same time, that is a way that you are actually taking care of yourself and advocating for yourself. Um, cultivating open-mindedness, um, you know, in all experiences, just recognizing that even within um, shared experience, uh, people's um, individual experiences are very different. Uh, you know, my anxiety is very different than someone else's anxiety. My um, understanding and experience of being an East Indian, South Indian is very different than someone else's experience, and especially in America. Um, you know, I'm a first generation and, and that's a different experience for other first generations. Um, you know, share experiences, you know, part of, you know, the self is, is being able to be open about what your experiences are and, and acknowledging the courage it takes in yourself to share that with other people. Um, you know, I recently had a friend who shared some struggles that she might be experiencing. And, and I was just like in awe about that, that there was some recognition that this may be what's going on. And it was like, that was one of the first times that I've heard that being expressed. And it, and it really elevated some respect that I had for her because she was open to that and being able to share that with me. Um, and as an ally then too, you know, encouraging conversations about these things, um, you know, asking the person what they may need from you, you know, what, what is it that I can do to help you through this? Or what can I do to maybe make work a little bit easier so that you can attend to what you need? Um, you know, being present for somebody else who may be suffering, um, you know, suffering is a common experience that we all have. Um, and so that's what connects us, right? And pain, though, tends to disconnect us. Um, you know, when we see people in pain, we tend to kind of stay away from them. And, and that's when we ultimately, because we don't know what to do, yet we can connect with people because we know they're suffering. Um, and that is, you know, human suffering is, is everywhere. Um, support does mean different things to different people. And so asking people what that means to them, you know, how can I be supportive? Um, that's one thing that I've always asked to or, or try to be mindful about asking is what can I do to be supportive? Um, what can I do, you know, whether it be in a work setting or as a as a friend or a family member or, um, you know, as a as a um, um, a professor or as a uh, as a as a counselor, you know, what is it that I can do for you in this in this moment to be supportive of you? And oftentimes it is just listening. Um, and then also, you know, sharing other, sharing personal experiences as an ally, you know, that it may not be the same experience and yet there may be things that you relate to. Um, you know, it's not the same experience yet I can relate to uh, what it's like to struggle 
um, when you don't feel motivated or when, um, you know, I know time, there's been times when I don't feel motivated or want to get out of bed or whatever the case may be. Um, so those are different things that you could do with stigma uh, because that's such a huge part of why, uh, what, uh, one of the primary reasons why people do not get help for mental health and for substance use disorders, and then it goes left untreated um, because of the fact that people are very much afraid. There's a lot of fear about how others are going to judge them or discriminate or um, treat them differently um, when they're already different. Um, and you know, our differences are, are what makes us unique. Um, and so that's the the paradox of it, right? Is that we're unique because of our differences, and yet we get also stigmatized and then also um, discriminated against. Um, and so, you know, kind of talking about, um, you know, with uh, South Asian East Indian culture, um, I wanted to bring in somebody who talks a little bit more and is uh, much more of an export expert in this because she, um, you know, provides some of these services to a much higher degree than I do. Um, but I wanted to welcome our guest. Um, and so Charu, I'm gonna turn it over to you and the floor is yours. Thank you, Serena, and thank you, Pramila, for bringing me in today. A really great platform for our friends to listen in about uh, how to destigmatize mental health in BIPOC communities. And uh, I am Charu Agarwal. I'm the lead consultant with NAMI National. I, uh, NAMI National, for people who don't know what NAMI stands for, is National Alliance on Mental Illness. And uh, we are, uh, I'm associated with their Office of Innovations, CCIE team, Cross-Cultural Innovation and Engagement team. And we are working hard to destigmatize mental health uh, conversation in BIPOC communities. And what an apt month to bring this topic, Serena, because this is the baby Campbell Moore, as everybody knows, Baby Campbell Moore's um, Minority National um, Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, and I'm happy to be here discussing our initiative called Chai and Chat for South Asian communities. And what does Chai and Chat mean in South Asian, um, for South Asian communities? First of all, when we say South Asian, we mean people who trace their ancestry back to uh, some countries in in, in South Asian subcontinent, starting with India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bhutan, and Maldives. Um, we also uh, see uh, consider people from Afghanistan and some people from Tibet as well in South Asian uh, diaspora sometimes, because the geographical lines are sometimes not very rigid for people who are displaced from their homes. Uh, they might have taken refuge in one of these South Asian countries, uh, so we will serve them as part of this initiative. So uh, that said, Chai and Chat is, um, 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 well, should I say, uh, well, I'm just trying to find the right words, but I think Chai and Chat is really meant to destigmatize mental health conversation in these communities. A uh, lot of times we get that in South Asian communities that, you know, it's the model minority myth, right? Um, mm. You're so affluent, you speak English perfect, right. uh, you guys make a certain uh, median income and how come you have these problems? But as we all know, mental health happens to anybody and everybody, mm -hmm. right? Everybody can have mental health challenge at some point in their life. It can be episodic, it can continue, it can be clinical. And Serena, you are an expert on that front. Uh, but I will talk a little bit about what Chai and Chat is doing to really destigmatize the conversation in South Asian communities. But before I start introducing Chai and Chat initiative, I do want to mention to anyone who's listening in and who might not be South Asian, that we have other initiatives as well for BIPOC communities. We have Sharing Hope. Um, which is uh, uh, which caters uh, towards uh, South Africa, oh, sorry, African American communities. Um, then we have uh, Maniwala for Filipina communities, Compartendo Esperanza for Hispanic communities. Uh, we also are going to be uh, starting our uh, Native Indian uh, initiative as well. So Chai and Chat series, uh, we call it a series because it consists of three conversations. 
the first one, and each conversation is 1.5 hours long. We do it via Zoom. We can do it in person. Um, we are actually uh, partnering with our local NAMI affiliates uh, to bring it to their communities nationwide as well. Uh, so if you are interested, I will leave my information later on in this uh, group. I'll share uh, you know, on the chat. Uh, but Chai and Chat is three conversations. The first one is 1.5 hours long. And the first one actually starts with watching some videos together. Videos by South Asian um, community members talking about their mental wellness journey. And what, uh, you know, that really, uh, in the first conversation, we want to destigmatize the conversation. We want to ask our participants, what is your mental wellness journey looking like to you? How can your community support you? How can uh, your allies support you? Uh, what resources do you need? What are the barriers in your mental wellness journey? That's what our first conversation is about. The second conversation, we bring in an expert. We bring in, uh, bring in an expert like Serena or a clinician who's rooted in their communities, who's South Asian and who knows, um, has, has actually uh, had a lot of uh, clients who are South Asians as well. So this expert can come in and tell us what to look for in a therapist, uh, you know, when you're seeking mental health um, um, help or when you are embarking on a mental wellness journey. So we bring in that expert and we stay with them for 1.5 hours. Again, sometimes, again, it's not very really rigid. It can go on for two hours. And most of the cases we see the conversation always goes on and on because people are so eager to talk and uh, to learn from each other. Uh, so this expert talks to us about um, uh, you know, self-care. How should I take care of myself? What uh, do I look for? Uh, suppose my child is having a mental health crisis. How can I support my child and so forth? Now the third conversation um, is focused on signs and symptoms as well as resources. We've curated a list of national resources to help with uh, the, the South Asians, caters towards South Asian community because this is Chai and Chat. And, uh, really helping people find resources they need. Do they have a language barrier? Do they have a transportation barrier? How can we help? How can a nonprofit, a government service, a service uh, which is available through public health, what is there in our communities that can help us, uh, again, get help for our mental wellness journey? We also share resources which are localized to your community. So for example, I would if I was to do a conversation for uh, you know, Chicago area, I would put together some resources which I can share with the participants in Chicago so that they're not like calling 50 people to get help. And then they learn that it's not even in their county or in their uh, you know, in their area. Uh, geographical area where they live. So these are the resources we share in the last conversation. We also invite a panel of people with lived experiences to our last conversation because, you know, what's better than listening from each other, hearing from each other, how did I get help when I had a mental health challenge in my life or how am I taking care of my mental wellness? So we call in uh, people who look like us, who speak our languages and, you know, who have had challenges like us. How did they thrive on their journey to mental wellness? So that's our, um, you know, in short, what Chai and Chat is about. If anyone who's listening in today is interested to learn about all our initiatives, we have an orientation and orientation is for everyone. From, uh, you know, you can be from any background, any race, you can attend our orientation to learn more about initiatives. We have it fourth Wednesday of every month. Uh, I am going to share something with you all. So you have my email. And if you're interested, uh, then you can, sh uh, can you see my email, Serena? Uh, well, you probably want to put it in the chat box. Okay, I I'll yeah, just to okay. just to be safe. Yeah, let me put it in the chat box. I'll drop two files in the chat box. One is um a, a one pager on what Chai and Chat is about. It will have the email on the end of the page. Uh, you can contact me for any information on Chai and Chat. Uh, the other flyer, sorry. <clears throat> I'm just having a little throat thing. Uh, but the other flyer will be about a conversation that's coming up. 
on July 20th. So we are in the middle of doing a conversation for ASHA USA, which is a community-based organization in Minnesota and Illinois. We are doing a conversation for them via Zoom on July 20th. And if you are a South Asian and you would love to attend that conversation, you're welcome. The registration link will be on the flyer that I'll put in the chat and uh, we'll, uh, you know, you can learn more about it. We It's the second conversation though, part of our series, the second one where we are calling in an expert to talk to you. But Serena, if you have any questions for me, let me drop my files in the chat. Yeah, no, I think this is, you know, really a great initiative um, to talk about, you know, and it brings up a lot of different pieces to, to relate to in terms of shared experience, because I know like working, working in the field, you know, one of the things that usually helps people talk more and destigmatizes talking about their experiences is when they first hear other people talk about their experiences, right? And, and I think, you know, that's the important piece about it is that, you know, by one person opening up and being able to just say, hey, this is, you know, what I went through, and what I went through, and, and I kind of came out on the other side of it, and these are the things that helped me with it, and I want to be able to give that, you know, back to somebody else and let them know that you have, you know, that you can get through this, um, you know, let me help you if you want me to, that I think that's really important, you know, especially in cultures that, um, you know, that don't usually use outside resources, um, you know, and really try to, you know, be very, um, you know, our family, you know, our family can handle this right. but when they right. don't know what it's about even. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. we had talked a little bit about that before too. And so I'm curious a little bit about how you might handle that or what kind of uh, responses you've given to people when they ask about, you know, family members and, and how to manage that. Right. Very good question, Serena. And we always get this question in almost every conversation. Yeah. So how we've done it is, uh, you know, first of all, the chai and chat, why we do three conversation is to build the trust of people. Mm -hmm. Maybe in our first conversation, nobody is going to really open up and start talking about family. But when we come to our second or third conversation, this question comes up, how do I tell my parents? I need help. Why are my parents not supportive? Because, you know, I, I'm an immigrant from India. I grew up in an entirely different environment. My kids yeah. are growing up in a very different environment. Right. But at the same time, I don't want to, uh, but, you know, I have no right or uh, actually uh, nobody has the right to tell the kids you, you're privileged. Why are you going through this? Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of a younger generation is struggling through that. You know, I understand they'll, they'll come into those conversations and they'll say, you know, I, I understand my parents went through a lot. And I think I almost feel guilty for telling them that I'm going through my problems when I am so privileged, when I have everything. And they remind me about it every day. But, you mm -hmm. know, we have to understand that every generation struggles through different traumas. Right. Our children are going through a parallel cultural existence. Yeah. They're trying to be American. They're trying to exist as a South Asian inside their homes. There are certain expectations as immigrant parents we are putting on our children yeah. and our you know, and there's a peer expectation from their uh, peers. So uh, that said, I think in open communication, and that's why we name our initiatives like uh, very, um, very, uh, you know, community centered yeah. names. When a people, when um, a person sees a flyer, chai and chat, what can it be about? You know, right. chatting, right? It's we, chai. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's chai and it's chat. You know, we might eat some samosas with it. Right. Uh, it's really just talking, talk, mm -hmm. sit around the dining table, check in with your kids, check in with your seniors. There are different kinds of trauma, Serena. You talked about it in the beginning. Immigration is a trauma in itself. Absolutely. Being isolated from your community when you are actually a grown up. Yeah. You, as a South Asian, we grew up in very tight knit communities. Mm -hmm. We grew up in communities who took care of us, good or bad. You know, we we are uh, we believe in collectivism, uh, but at the same time, we also want to explore individualism. Mm -hmm. So. Keeping your avenues open, keeping your thought process open towards exploring new things, um, ex uh, you know, checking in with your children, checking in with your seniors, checking in with yourself. Yeah. Uh, how are you feeling today? What There are so many resources available that can help you. 
Yeah. Okay, I'm not feeling too great today. Do I need to call my therapist? Do I need to set up an appointment with my therapist? Or uh, is there, uh, sometimes we can't afford to see a therapist. You mm -hmm. know, we don't want to see a therapist because we, a therapist might not speak our language. It's okay, we have helplines. NAMI has a helpline. You can always call and ask for resources. And uh, it's all on uh, the files that I shared. Uh, all our information, NAMI information and my email is on the flyer. Feel free to send me an email. And to all our uh, listeners who are not South Asian today and uh, you know, or, or don't belong to a BIPOC community, I would say, like my coworker beautifully puts it, be our ally outside the room. We need you, we need to, uh, you know, help each other or our mental wellness journey so our communities can thrive. Be our ally, help people out. You have a friend from a uh, BIPOC community, ask them, how can you help? Can you help find resources? Can you talk about your experiences, like Serena said? Share with them what how you have helped yourself so they can get those connected to those resources as well. You know, mm -hmm. is, yeah. there, is there a resource that... Uh, caters to their specific community. Find out. You can find out a lot on Google these days. Find out, get them connected. I think that that would be my advice to our all non-BIPOC friends today. Well, that's great. Yeah, and there's a lot that you said, you know, because I, I think there is something related to, you know, the fact that the, there's a lot of um, stress and struggle that comes in with different generations. And I remember talking with my mom about, you know, when she first moved here to America, she gave us like an American childhood. You know, we did Christmas and Easter. Uh -huh. And how did she find out about how to do Christmas and Easter? Like, you know, there's no, we didn't have Google back then when I was growing up, right? And so just the, just the fact that she had to do all this research and talk mm -hmm. to people and find out how to create this holiday that she knew nothing about, I mean, I can't even imagine the stress of that, but she wanted to give us an American holiday because mm -hmm. we were living in America, you know? And so those yeah. are the conversations that like we've had where it's been like, wow, you know, you didn't have anybody here. You did this all on your own. These were the struggles that you had. And so it has definitely helped me appreciate, you know, what she went through. And then she's also able to appreciate what I've gone through, you know, struggling with, you know, coming from two different cultures right. and trying to figure out how to balance those two. Um, yeah. I'm going to type in your, um, uh, is it okay if I put your email? I can, yes, yeah, if you can, can type put, it in. Yep. Yeah, I'm not going to do it for you. I mean, I, you know, I think I would remember not <laughs> to do it for somebody. Here's my email yeah. for Thank everyone. You. Yep. And I want to say too, you know, because a lot, and hi, Judy, hi, Erica, I did put a chat in there to say hi, but I just wanted to acknowledge that I see you. Um, you know, a lot of my, um, a lot of the people that join us have been very supportive of me and they're not from the BIPOC community, mm -hmm. um, but I so appreciate the fact that they support me in so many ways and, um, and listen and share their experiences with me. And so I wanted to acknowledge that, that they don't know how much that means to me that they are such a good friend and ally and, and a support system to me. Um, so that kind of goes to the heart of what you were saying, you know, that we could share those common experiences and relate in that way that, you know, there is that commonality of suffering, you know, and that we can rely on each other to get through some of those things that we need to get through. Um, right. Right. There's so that. many intersections that overlap, you know, we yeah. go through some similar problems and some similar challenges and we might have some similar solutions there's always cultural wisdom from every culture to yeah. really take care uh, of your mental wellness and chai and chat really focuses on that too bringing out your cultural wisdom you know yeah. how can we go back to our ancient wisdoms uh india gave yoga to everyone you know <laughs> <laughs> Buddhism gave, which actually originated from India yep. and Nepal, gave meditation to everyone. Yep. So just uh, go back to your cultural wisdom, share it with people. I okay. might like something that my Hispanic friends are doing, and it might be useful for me to uh, take care of myself in a different way. Right. I think we can just help each other. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's so much that we can learn just by listening to how people you know, rely on their own um, practices, you know, that they've learned growing up too, that, you know, these are things that have enriched their lives. And, and I oftentimes, you know, with clients and students, 
um, have asked them, you know, what, what is it that you've used that has helped you from your culture or your faith? Um, you know, that may not be part of, you know, mainstream society um, that can be helpful to you in times of stress or, you know, duress that that could be helpful. Oh, thanks, Linda. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, and yes, I know you, I know you are. <laughs> I know we talk about that too. So um, I understand that. Um, so I know we got about a minute left. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions or if there's any comments that people want to express um, in the minute. I don't know, Pramila, um, if there's anybody on Facebook that wants to ask anything or share anything. I just want to open that up. So there's one anonymous question which has come in, uh, Dr. Serena and Charu. Stigma, yeah. uh, is it specific to different cultures, ethnicity, or overall, there is a stigma to talk about mental health, you know, you know, yes, in the society, in the community. Yes. So Pramila, thank you for that question. I yeah. think a great question. So mm -hmm. yes, there is a stigma in every community. You would be surprised our mainstream communities in America have stigma with mental health. It's yeah. just how you approach it. Nowadays, we find in South Asian communities, I am finding that, and I'm not by any means a very big expert or anything in the uh, in this uh, sphere, but the youth are very eager to talk about mental health. Yeah. But Older generation is not yet open because there's that thing about washing your dirty laundry in front of people. You know, you don't want to go to somebody outside your family and start talking about mental health challenges because you're so used to seeking somebody out in your extended family to talk about mental health challenge. Maybe not be your mother, maybe uh, an auntie, a sister, uh, you mm -hmm. know, a cousin. So that kind of thing. I think the stigma exists in every community. In some communities, it's just a little bit more because of lack of resources and awareness. That's what I would say. If we brought in a good amount of awareness to South Asian communities or BIPOC communities, we would see the level of stigma go down. And that's exactly what we are trying to strive for at NAMI National, destigmatizing mental health conversation in BIPOC communities. Yeah, and I also think just to add to that too, I mean, I totally agree with that. And I also think that stigma is something that kind of it, it it cultivates through experience too that when people have these kind of experiences where they're negatively affected by somebody they pass that on you know to other people um mm -hmm. which then kind of gets internalized into somebody that oh you know my uh family member had negative experiences with a therapist therefore i'm not going to ever see a therapist you yes. know kind of a thing and that's a stigma mm -hmm. that then uh, happens you know it's a prejudice it's a it's a stereotype, you know, that's what stigma is. It's a negative belief that's held. Um, and so it formulates because of someone else's experience. Um, and so I think part of it is that when we internalize uh, stigma based on someone else's experience and not our own truth, you know, mm -hmm. that's also part of, of what makes it more challenging to break through those things and, and being able to take care of ourselves more authentically. Um, right. right. So, yeah. And, yeah. And also as colored people, we don't want to be very vulnerable in front of all the communities and talk about mental health struggles openly because we do face certain amount of racism or right. uh, biases in different communities. So we just want to be careful of that all the time. And I think that adds to the stigma. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there is a sense of safety that we need to, yes. to be mindful about because, you know, in society, we do have to be mindful about what that looks like. So, um, yeah. so there's always that kind of balance, you know, how much can I talk about without okay. causing harm to myself, you know, and yet at the same time advocating for myself where I'm letting people know that these are real things that I'm struggling with or people are struggling with and yet not bringing harm from the society to myself. And we've seen this in the mainstream culture and in different cultures around the world. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, we, we see these in the, we see this in the news all the time, how this happens. Um, so there's always this balance. There's always this, this swing, you know, this is the, this is, this, this is how, this is, this is it. Yeah, this is it. So. <laughs> So yeah, that was a great question. Yes, and Charu, I hope uh, you know the the person who posted this is listening and watching. Sorry, he or she is listening or watching, and can relate to it. So Thank we're you, almost on top of the hours, Dr. Srina. So, uh, uh, so do, uh, Srina, do you also want to share to our listeners that there's going to be a change in timing in starting August? 
Yes. So starting in August, we're going to move to Wednesday nights and um, I will, you know, keep reminding people of that uh, when the next, uh, our next podcast is July 22nd, um, which is a Monday. Um, and so the one following after that will be um, on a Wednesday and our next session, which is a Monday, we also have a guest speaker. Um, and she is a therapist who actually is an equine assist. She um, does equine assisted therapy. So she will talk about that. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Okay. So Charo, thank you so much thank for coming you. and giving us your time. I really appreciate the short notice um, and sharing with us about this initiative and, and all that you do. And thank you for being of service. And Pramila, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you everyone for listening in and thank you. Take care of yourself and take those mental health days off. That's what I would thank tell you. my BIPOC friends. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you guys. Thanks, Judy.